So hopefully you've watched video one and you've tried example two in our notes here and you're ready to check and see if your work is correct. Um, so just as a reminder, we should always look for our GCF first. And that's the only part that's new today. Um, last class we talked about how to factor trinomials. So for today, all you're doing that is, is extra is we're adding an extra step of checking to see if there's something you can take out at the beginning. So number one, I'm just going to put notes over here. Look for GCF. And if you look for GCF, you should notice that we can divide 16, 20, and 6. All of those are divisible by 2. If you're not entirely sure, remember that you can go into uh, Desmos, type in GCF, comma, and then 16, comma, 20, comma, 6 and it should tell you that there is a GCF of two. So I am going to write a two down in front, which is part of our problem now, and I'm gonna divide that two out. I'm factoring it out, so I'm dividing out, opposite of multiplying, the two from each of our three terms. I'm gonna put the leftovers in parentheses below that, and that is what we're gonna work with to factor. 16 divided by two is eight, and I still have my x squared. And I have negative 20 divided in half is 10, negative 10. And negative 6 divided by 2, or dividing in half, is negative 3. Okay, so we've taken out our GCF. What's next? So all of our next steps are from our previous day 2, uh, where we're looking for uh, magic numbers to find our trinomial. Magic numbers to break into four terms, okay, because we need four terms to put them in a box in order to factor by grouping. So let's see what numbers we can make work. We need to break this into two terms, and we do that by making a little rainbow here. We take the 8 and we multiply it by a negative 3, and we get negative 24, okay. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 24. And then our middle number, if we don't multiply it, we don't do anything with it, we just take this negative and 10, we have to add up to negative 10. So then we find factors of negative 24. Um, and then we start what times 1 equals 24. 24. Is there something times 2 that could equal 24? Yes, 12. 3 that equals 24? Yep, 8. 4 that equals 24? Yep. 4 times 6 equals 24. 5 equals 24? Nope, doesn't look like it. And then 6, we're back to where we started. Okay, so then you add and subtract until you find the pairs that make a 10. Now there's 2 here that make 10. Um, actually, I have a 2 and a 12. Right? In order to get them uh, to be a negative and a negative, I'd have to, let's see what we could do. We could do 2 times 12 would be positive, so that doesn't work. If I need a negative 10, I'd have to make the 12 negative. 2 minus 12 gives me negative 10. Okay, what about um, multiplying? 2 times negative 12 gives me 24. Cool, okay, that works. If I tried to use the 4 and the 6, we would have run into a trouble. We can add them to get 10, but to add them to get negative 10, they both have to be negative. And then when we multiplied them, it wouldn't give us a, a negative number. It would give us a positive. So even though these do make a 10, we can't get them to work with our negative and positive values. So I'm going to have a plus 2 here and a minus 12 for the factors we use. And I'm going to bring this down to my next line. I have 2, which has to stay with it. It's part of our factors. It's one of the pieces that make up this uh, product. And then I'm going to bring this down. I keep the first, I keep the last, and this one in the middle gets broken up into 2x and negative 12x. Don't forget those x's because we're breaking this group of x's up, so it has to be x's that we're putting in there. Okay. Then we do step three, which is factoring by grouping. Mm 
and we're going to put those four into a box and factor out a common factor. Okay. So I am going to take this 8x squared and 2x, and I'm going to put them in the first row. You'll notice I'm putting in the signs so I don't forget them. Minus 12x. Minus 3 go in the second. So first, uh, I notice that there's a minus at the beginning of the line. That's going to come out. I can divide them both by 3. And they do not both have x's. Other row, uh, no negative in front. I can divide them both by 2. So I can take out, divide out a 2, and they do both have an x. And I'm going to do my columns. My first column starts with a plus. Don't have to worry about that. I can divide them both by 4. Both are divisible by 4, and I can take an x. Second column, there's this positive, so I don't have to worry about that. I can't take out a 2 or a 3. They only can be divided by a 1. And they don't have an x that I can take out, so I'm just going to leave that as a 1. So now my final answer, including all three of my factors, is the 2 that we found at the beginning. My second factor is along here, 2x minus 3. And my third factor is 4x plus 1. Okay. So hopefully that's what you got as well. Why don't you take a moment, pause this video, and try number one in SOL prep and see how you did. Then resume the video.